Good morning, everybody. Welcome. It's great to see you guys. If you want some smiling faces this morning, lots of energy, it's going to be an awesome day. Amen? It, oh, you know what? When the kids are, are they don't really respond, I make them do it again. This is going to be an awesome day today. Amen? Amen. 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 Yes, let's put a smile on our faces. It's going to be a great day of worship and celebrating our Savior today. So, welcome. Most of you who are joining us online, we welcome you. how you're doing, if you can pray, or um, just celebrate any joys that you have, that looks great. Today, from Psalm 119, verse 114, what an awesome reminder, you are my refuge and my shield, your word is a source, is my source of hope. You know, we have God's word, we have his promise that he is with us no matter what, and he is going to give us our strength, and he is our fortress whenever we are having times of trouble. So let's remember today to turn to him, turn to his word, and he is going to give us, fill us with absolutely everything we need. Amen? Amen. 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 Happy birthday this week to Jeff Ashwood, Todd Member, Ava Sloan, and Kelly Kennebit. We hope you guys have a great birthday. Also, happy anniversary this week to Vern and Kathy Ford. We hope you guys have a wonderful week to celebrate. We will be collecting our offerings at the end of the service here on your way out of the sanctuary, or you can uh, utilize the PayPal link on our website. You can drop off your offering, or you can mail it to the church. Regardless of how you do it, what a wonderful opportunity for us to worship and to give back to our Lord, who gives us so much every single day. So thank you so much for, for your giving. Just as a note, we do have a custodian position open here at the church. Um, if you are interested or if you know of anybody who is interested, they can stop by the office for an application um, and for more information. So spread the word. Sisters in Christ will be meeting this Tuesday, the 28th, at 5.30 in the conference room. So ladies, take note of that this Tuesday. And then Wednesday, the 29th, we are having a meal at 5 o'clock, and then we will be digging into the Bible study, and our kids, our children, and our youth are going to be meeting. Last week, we got to, it was beautiful weather. We had a fire outside. It was fantastic. Um, we just had a lot of fun as we dig into God's Word. So save the, save the date, save the time here. And then, I mentioned last week, and you're going to be hearing more about this as we move forward, but the end of October, we are going to be having a Halloween celebration, so to speak, a no-fear Bible adventure. It's called Heroes Unmasked. And this is really it's an opportunity for all of the church to come on. It's not just for kids. It's for all ages. We're going to be having food, and we're going to be having um, different uh, games in the fellowship hall for our kids. And we have a, an event that is going to be taking place right here in the sanctuary that night before we do our trump or treat. And so um, it'll be just a fun night for the entire church. And what an opportunity for us to be there for our families. You know, our families that may not come to church on Sunday, but they're here midweek. And what a great opportunity for all of us to be here to reach out to those families and to, to bring them in and to welcome them. So please, save the date, October 27th, it'll be from 5 to 7 that night, and it's for everybody. Alright, so, as I'm getting ready to start children's time today, I would like to ask Ray to come on up here, because I, I could use some assistance, please. So, okay, there is a Bible verse I would like to, to start out with today. It's from John, chapter 15, verses 5 to 7, this is what it says. I am the vine, you are the branches. This is Jesus talking. If you remain in me and I in you, you will bear much fruit. Apart from me, you can do nothing. If you do not remain in me, you are like a branch that is thrown away and withers. Such branches are picked up, thrown into the fire, and burned. If you remain in me and my words remain in you, ask whatever you wish and it will be done for you. Okay, a couple things I want you to take note of here, kids. Apart from me, Jesus says, you can do nothing. And ask for whatever you wish, and it will be done for you. Okay, remember those two, two verses. Now, when you have a branch, and you cut it away from the tree, what happens? It dies. It dies, right? Because you're taking the nutrients that this branch is getting from that tree, and you're cutting it off, right? So then it loses its strength. 
it, it starts to die, it withers up, and it's not good anymore, right? Well, to kind of illustrate this today, I asked Ray to come on up here. And before we do this little experiment, I guess I wanted all of us to do a little exercise. It's good to exercise in the morning. It gives you energy for the day, right? All right, so here's what I'd like you to do. Hold your game, whatever game you use the most. Hold it right out in front of you, palm facing down, okay? And I would like you to repeat after me. My way. My way. Okay? Now I want you to make a fist. Put your fingers in and repeat after me. God's way. God's way. My way. My way. God's way. Okay, everybody good with that? Okay, all right. So now, I want to show you when we do things our way, my way, you're powerless. It's not going to work out. But when we do things God's way, we are going to have God's power in us. We are going to experience all the strength that God has to be able to do things through Him. Okay? So, Ray, what I would like you to do is using this match, I would like you to put it on the first knuckle of your middle finger and then take your index finger and your ring finger on top. To hold it in place. Now, keeping your fingers out in front of you, do not bend your knuckles. <laughs> Don't drop the match. <laughs> okay, so you have your, your, the match is on, so just a regular match, everybody. Just a plain old, delicate match. Okay? He's got the match on his first knuckle of his middle finger. And then the index finger and the ring finger are holding that match in place. Keeping that hand level without bending your knuckles, I would like you to break that match. Come on, Ray. Break the match. Yes, you can. <laughs> it, it doesn't work, does it? I can't do it. When, when we are trying to do it our way, it's not going to work. It's impossible, actually, to break a match that way. Now I want you to bend your knuckles like you're going to do it God's way and break the match. Did it break? It broke. Breaks pretty easily, doesn't it? Yeah. Thank you very much, Ray. Good job. <laughs> when we do things our way, we don't experience the strength. We don't experience the things that God is going to give to us when we decide to do it this way. But as soon as we include God in everything that we're doing, when we make prayer a part of our everyday life, when we make decisions that include God, that, that include what God has to say about how we live our lives, God's power immediately fills us. We are strengthened. And Jesus says, this is what prayer is all about. You can experience amazing things. Whatever you wish for, you will receive because you have my strength. You have my power. Now, I do need to say, does that mean it's, we're going to get exactly what we want, exactly what we want? No, no, because God knows what's best for us. But God wants us to experience his joy, his love, and his peace. And he is going to answer our prayers. We are going to be able to, to get whatever we wish. Those prayers are going to be answered when we remain in him. But we have to make prayer a part of everyday life. All day long, right? In everything that we do. A life without prayer, making decisions that don't include God, or decisions that don't honor God, are going to make us powerless. We're going to be miserable. Things are not going to work well. But when we make prayer a daily part of our life, when we include God in the decisions that we make, make Him a part of everything that we do, notice I repeated this. It's good information, guys. Great information. Make him a part of every single thing we do. We are going to be filled with God's strength. Why? Because we are connected to the source. We are no longer cut off from Jesus, but we are alive, and we are thriving, and we have his strength, and we have his power. So let's remember that this week as we go out. Let's make prayer a part of every single thing that we do. Let's make our decisions based on how God wants us to live. Amen? Amen. 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 Let's pray. Father, we come to you today, Lord, and we just give you praise for the gorgeous weather and for the opportunity to be here to worship with you today. And Lord, as we, we finish today, as we go throughout our week, Lord, help us.
to make those decisions, those, and, and just the time, to carve out the time to talk with you and to, to hear what you're trying to tell us, to be still and to hear your voice and to just live life the way that you want us to live. We love you so much, Lord, and we just thank you for all that you're doing in our lives. And we ask this in your name. Amen. 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 This morning, we're going to be singing a song called My Jesus. You know, one thing about this song, this was, uh, this song was written, the artist is 19 years old when she wrote this song. I think she's 19 right now. She wrote this song as a testament to her faith because she wanted to share with the world how much she loves the Lord and what he has done for her. And to help us remember that it doesn't matter what we're going through in life, that we have the Lord and God is going to guide us through absolutely everything. So what, a, what an awesome testament for a 19-year-old. Amen? Amen. Yeah, it's awesome. So today, if you're able to stand with us as we start our worship this morning, and so we have a special treat. We've got some kiddos that are joining us today. So guys, why don't you come on up and go <laughs> We're with us this morning. Come on up.
comes from trusting in God and His will.
every button I know how to push to get this thing back into a language that I know how to read. There ain't enough buttons and there ain't enough word with it all up here to get it done. Well, my wife got up and, and uh, I'm, I'm fussing a little bit that somebody pirated our Netflix account. So I finally found Netflix's telephone number and I called them up. And I, I said, I got some problems. And I explained to them what was going on and the gal on the other end said, well, I probably can help you out. So she began to take me through this litany of steps that I got to do, you know. And uh, so before I finish this story, let me back up just a little bit and put a little bit more background in this story. This is the fall season, you know. I, I go back and forward from Canton to Galva all the time. And uh, so I notice that the combines are out there in the fields. They're picking corn. And there are combine and beans. And do you know what happens? I live out in the country. And that means there are little furry creatures that don't want to be outside no more. And they come in the house. And that makes my wife go on the hunt. If she sees a mouse, uh, we're after them mice. We were sitting in the living room the other night and I saw one of them run across the, 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 the doorway. And my wife is now. Nah! And the hunt is on. So she goes to, she goes to town and she finds all these blue traps. And we got blue traps. Like, you know, you you run out of here a mouse with the blue trap in. She don't mean to get you. Back to the Netflix story. So I'm talking with this gal, and I believe she's from over in India. She speaks English, but it's not my English. But we're getting through it. And so she's telling me to do this and do that. And one of the things she finally says is, is you need to shut off your dish receiver. Unplug it from its power and let it set for just a few minutes, and then we'll plug it back in. So I'm in my stock and feet. Huh? And I walk up to where the TV's at, and I reach up to unplug it to shut it off. And there's one of them blue traps that I didn't look down and see it. So I stepped on one of them blue traps. <laughs> but my stock and feet. Now one of the things I'm going to tell you for sure is you can't get your sock off of the blue trap once you step on it. Now that stock is forever on that blue trap. So after I talked to this lady from India, Huh? And I'm looking down at my foot and there's, a, there, 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 there's one of them blue traps on it, you know. I'm sitting down and I'm hollering at my wife to come and help me, you know. So I'm sitting down and she's trying to pull the blue, blue trap. It won't pull. Finally, she grabs hold of my sock and takes it off of my foot. And I keep talking to the gal and then I see my wife over there trying to separate my sock from that blue trap. And she can't do it. Crying. At the end of the day, she pitched my sock. I got an extra one now. <laughs> well, the gal from Netflix finally got my TV going. But when I woke up on Saturday morning, I didn't know that life was going to have excitement and spices of all kinds in it. You know, we live our life out there, don't we? And situations come our way. Things that we don't expect maybe things we don't want. And so we are called then to decide what to do. And as Christians, one of the things that we ought to be doing is reaching out and having a conversation with the Lord. We ought to be entering into prayer. Uh, over in Matthew 7 and 7, Jesus gave us some directional insight to prayer and praying. He said, ask, and it shall be given to you. Seek, and you shall find. Knock, and it shall be opened unto you. Let me ask you a question this morning. What does prayer and praying mean to you? And how effectively 
and efficiently do you put it to use in your life? That's the $64,000 question, isn't it? So let me begin by saying this. Prayer is not getting God to run our errands. Prayer is getting us ready to do God's will in our lives. Over in Jeremiah 33 and 3, it was put this way. Call on me, says the Lord, and I will answer you, and I will show you great and mighty things which you do not know. Then in John 14 and 13, Jesus said, you're going to ask anything in my name, and the Father will do it. Jesus said again in John 16 and 23, you will be able to ask the Father directly, and he will grant your request because you ask it in my name. If you took those three verses of Scripture, and you hung them on your refrigerator door, and you believe them with all your heart, then with God's help, you would become this generation's new great faith healer. Jesus said, what you ask the Father in my name, he said, I will do it. Bill Gates didn't say that. Warren Buffett didn't say that. The government didn't say that. God Almighty said that. And let me encourage you this morning to believe it, to practice it, and to put it to use. And to make it a part of who and what you are. <coughs> Why pray? Why do we pray? Why do you pray? It's because God answers prayer every single time that you ask. Sometimes he says yes. Sometimes he says no. Sometimes he says wait. Now I know that two of those three responses aren't necessarily the answers that we like to hear. We don't like to hear no and wait. We always think if it's not yes, then my prayers haven't been answered. But that is not the case. God can say yes. God can say no. And he also can tell us to wait. Those are the possibilities that God uses to answer our prayers and our petitions. And no matter which one he chooses, he always, he always answers our prayers. So why should we pray? We should pray because we are taught to and we are commanded to in the scriptures. Jesus said over in Matthew, the sixth chapter, when you pray, not if you pray, we are called to prayer. We know the power of prayer, the plan of prayer, the pattern and the priority of prayer. But all too often, we only give lip service to the placing of our petitions before the throne of God. Listen, we can almost hear God saying in heaven this morning, I wonder why my people, my children, are trying to live their life with all the power that I give them, and they're not putting it to use. I mean, it's like having the keys to a, a new Shelby GT Mustang, 600 horsepower under the hood. Vroom, vroom, raw, awesome power. Power enough to take your breath away. Power enough to when you bash down on the gas pedal, the tires and the back break loose and creates a wall of smoke. Power enough to get you from point A to point B faster than you ever imagined. Power enough that you ought to be paying attention to where Smokey the Bear might be hiding. And he's got a radar gun in his hand. Can you imagine having the keys to one of them Shelby GT Mustangs with that much power and then driving like my 71 year old wife? <laughs> Two hands on the steering wheel, <laughs> looking straight ahead, and never, ever, ever 
approaching the speed limit. <laughs> Driving sort of hunched over a little bit and leaning forward. Huh? If you've got 600 horse under the hood and you're leaving 575 of those horses in the stable, something is wrong. It just ain't right. Why have all that horsepower if you're not going to use it? That is what prayer is like. Prayer is the key to heaven's high performance engine. It has the muscles and strength to get things done and to take you to places that you can hardly imagine. Start her up. Jesus has handed you the keys. Mash down on the gas pedal. Watch where it will take you. Buckle up, because if God be for you, who can be against you? But for all too many, they possess all that power, and it doesn't get used. Jesus says to you and me that I have paid the price so you can have the keys. Here they are. But no, you've got heaven's high performance engines kept under a blanket and locked up in the garage. Brothers and sisters, fling off that blanket. Throw open those garage doors. Take out your prayers and give them a spin. Stretch out and see what God can do. God has given to you and me the awesome responsibility of prayer. He has given to you and me a freedom to pray. God says, when you ask, I will answer. What did Jeremiah 33 and 3 say? Call on me and I will answer you and show you great and mighty things which you know not. Over in Luke, you'll have a chapter in the ninth verse, Jesus said, and so I tell you, Keep on asking, and you will receive what you ask for. Keep on seeking, and you will find. Keep on knocking, and the door will be open. For everyone who asks receives, everyone who seeks finds, and to everyone who knocks, the door will be open. God answers our prayers. Yes, no, or wait. But he always answers our prayers. One author put it this way. He said, I asked God for strength and God gave me difficulties to make me strong. I asked for wisdom and God gave me problems to solve. I asked for riches and God gave me plenty of work to do. I asked for courage and God gave me dangers to overcome. I asked for love and God brought troubled people into my life. I asked for favors, and God gave me opportunities. I asked for power that I might have the praise of others, and he gave me instead weakness that I might feel the needs of God. Brothers and sisters, fish, and you will catch fish. Plant, and you will have flowers and food. Wash, and you will be clean and smell good. As I close this morning, I want to draw your attention to 2013. It was a, a year of noteworthiness in my life and in my wife's life. In 2013, my grandson Nathan was going to be pulled under some sand out in Michigan City, out in the state of Indiana. He is going to be buried under 12 foot of sand for four hours. He's going to have more than 50 men walking on top of him. When he's found, they're going to declare him dead. Another thing that's going to happen in 2013, our oldest daughter is diagnosed with breast cancer. And she begins a, a regimen chemotherapy, surgery, reconstructive surgery. Such a long, long road to go down. 
So as we went through the early parts of 2013 with Nathan, we were able to have the front row seat to God saving our grandson. I mean, we were on the news nationally, night after night, day after day, week after week, as a, as a nation, and even other parts of the world, Europe and Australia and South America, were watching and asking questions. I remember on one Sunday morning when I was preaching, there were cameras from one side of the church clear to the other side, focused on us on a Sunday morning. They wanted to hear about the miracle that was our grandson. And so, you know what? We prayed during those times. Oh, my goodness. My daughter, when they was out there at Mount Baldy, Nathan had been sucked underneath of the sand. My daughter was there looking at a piece of dirt that her son once stood on and he was gone. She was down on bended knees crying out to God, Please, God, don't take my son. Please help me. Please. As the minutes tick by, as the hours tick by, and the agony set in that Nathan was gone, that he was gone. Several hours in, she called my wife and I. And she said, Nathan is gone, Dad. Nathan is gone. I remember so well my wife when she heard that news and how she felt that she hollered out to one of our grandkids in Paris. We immediately fell to our knees beside that bed in that motel room up in Ticonderoga, New York. We cried and we prayed. But I stand here this morning as a, as a testimony that I got a front row seat to watch God do the unthinkable. I got to see with my own eyes. I got to hear with my own ears. I got to feel with my own heart. And I watched God do the impossible, to do the miraculous, who brought a boy back to the corner called dead, and he brought him back to life again. It forever changed me as I got to see that. I know that God hears prayer and that he responds to the calls of his children in those times of need. Amen. But I'm going to tell you another story this morning. And that's about our oldest. Her name was Mary. She was the apple of my eye. She came down with breast cancer. And there was no bigger trooper than Mary. She was an athlete of athletes. She was a coach up at Blackhawk College for more than 25 years. It was her goal in life to beat me at whatever she was doing. If we played racquetball, she wanted to win. And if we went fishing, she wanted to win. And she was a, a competitor. She had the most lovely of smiles and the best of personalities. She ran a, a hair place in Erie, Illinois. And she knew everybody. Huh? If you want to know what's going on in town, you just ask the hairdresser. They'll know. Yeah. <laughs> that was 2013. Four years later. Pray for the same God. The God that drove us to our knees with Nathan. And the God that heard our prayers and brought back our grandson. Was still God with Mary. And the hurt was still hurt. miss her every day. So God says yes on some days. God says no on others. 
Other days he says, wait. But brothers and sisters, we're called because we are his to bend our knees, to open our hearts, and to reach out to him. So as I'm here this morning, I talk with you guys ever so much. And there are things that pop up in your life and I know they press against the substance of who and what you are. But I promise you, I promise you, reach out to the Lord. He hears you, he sees you, and he will respond. You are important to him. The two issues have been really thrust upon my heart over the last little bit. Dale saw the Clint has really been going under a, a rough run. So every day, Clint is on my heart and in my mind. And I ask him often, how's he doing? And he's been having a rough patch here lately. And so let me encourage you. I told Dale, I said, I will pray with you. I will bind my faith with you. And I'm going to believe with you. But in the end, I seek God's will, whatever it is, whether it was with Nathan, whether it was Mary, or with any of you. So I ask you, pray for clean. That God will bring restoration. I know we can do it. I've seen it. I got a front row seat. Amen. The other one that has pressed upon me sorely has been my dear friend, Ralph Bledsoe, and his wife, Becky. Back on the 14th of August, Ralph came down with the COVID. And five days after that, <coughs> Becky came down with it. She has been in the hospital in Kansas City ever since. And they sedated her. And she hasn't been conscious of any of that. And so I talked to him on the phone and I sent him text. And so I got this one yesterday and I wanted to share it with you. So I, I reached out and I, I said, is there any news, any news about Becky? And Ralph said, Pastor Don, there is some good news. Over the last two days, they have been testing Becky's ability to breathe on her own. She was breathing on her own for eight hours yesterday and today. Yay. She still not awake, but she's making some facial expressions. And I said this to Ralph. Praise the Lord. I deeply believe the forces of heaven are making the way for a fabulous testimony about the goodness and graciousness of our Lord. One thing is for sure, we both know that she will tell others of what God has done for her. She is a people person, and God has given her a message to tell to some folks who need to hear it. I will continually pray for a calm spirit to hold our hearts, and I also pray God gives eyes and ears to watch and understand how marvelous and powerful he is. There is another testimony that is being formed and fashioned hour by hour, day by day. And that is yours, Ralph. As God brings victory, watch closely so you can tell others what you have seen, what you have heard, and what you have felt. Thank you, Jesus. It is by your stripes that we receive our healing. And we travel from day to day, week to week, and month to month. Let us have conversations with God, knowing that God hears us and that God will respond to us. You are important to Him. He sent His only begotten Son to Calvary's cross that we might have life. And so let me encourage you to reach out and to pray and talk. And when you have a need, 
talk to a fellow believer. We will bind our faith together. We will reach out together. And we will watch as God does amazing things in our presence. Amen? Amen. Ms. Gretchen. We serve a risen Savior. If anybody has a need for prayer this morning, you can come on down and we will anoint with oil and we will pray for you. Thank you. 
thank you so much that we've had the opportunity to be here today, Lord. We just give you all praise. And we ask as we go throughout our week, Lord, that you will help us to pray, to spend that time with you and, and to reach for you when we are needing that wisdom and that guidance and the strength, Lord. Just fill us with all that we need, with your peace. And we just thank you for never, ever leaving us, for giving us the grace that we don't deserve. We don't deserve your love, Lord, but we just thank you for all that you do for us, no matter what. We love you. We just give you praise this morning. Be with us, Lord, as we leave here today, as we go through our week. We love you, and we ask all this in your name. Amen. 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 Have a great week, everybody.